So you've made a fantastic main dish, and you're wondering what side you can serve next to it. If you make a pasta, you'd also have to make a sauce, and the half an hour it takes for rice just seems like too much work. Well, how about you make some fried vermicelli instead? It has a texture similar to rice, and depending on how you make this, it will take between 10 to 15 minutes. If you're new here, I'm Obi, and today I'm going to show you how to cook vermicelli in two different ways. We'll make a classical Middle Eastern recipe, and I'll also show you how to switch the recipe up. Now, let's get started. Although we'll be cooking vermicelli like rice, it's actually a kind of pasta, and it has a long history that goes back almost a millennia. In modern Arabic, it's called Shariya, and you can trace that name back to the 15th century Syrian cookbook Kitab al tabikh It's also referenced in the 13th century Andalusian cookbook Fidolat al khawain where it is given the name of Atreya. The cookbook describes making a dough from semolina, flour, water and salt that is then stretched and rolled out as thin as possible. While it likely looks a little different from the modern vermicelli that we know, it's used in the same way in soups or as a side dish. The most common way you'll see vermicelli used is in rosa bichariya or rice with vermicelli. This classic Middle Eastern side is how most households will cook rice on a daily basis. Vermicelli on its own is usually served as a side dish alongside richer foods like duck, but personally I consider it a lazy weekday side dish. One important thing to note is that there are two kinds of vermicelli wheat and rice vermicelli. The rice one is usually sold as a whole noodle, and it has a completely different texture from the wheat ones, so I don't recommend you try to make this with rice vermicelli. To cook the vermicelli, we'll first start by frying it. In a pot over medium-high heat, add in one and a half tablespoons of butter or oil, and allow it to melt completely. Once it's melted and bubbling, add in 130 grams or one cup of vermicelli. You'll now fry this for about 5 minutes, stirring constantly until it turns a deep brown colour. This step is key to giving the vermicelli a good texture, as without it the vermicelli will release a lot of starch into the pot. It will still taste good with a shorter frying time, but expect it to have a sticky texture. My rule of thumb is to cook the vermicelli until it's just about to burn, and at that point it should have a deep brown colour. To season it, add 3 quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black or white pepper. After that, pour in enough chicken or vegetable stock to cover the vermicelli. I find that about 230 milliliters or one cup of stock is just right for a cup of vermicelli. You want the liquid to rise above the vermicelli by about half a centimeter or 3 sixteenths of an inch. Bring the pot to a boil, then turn the heat down to medium. Cover the pot with a tight fitting lid and allow this to steam for about 7 to 10 minutes. When the time is up, use a fork to fluff up the vermicelli and it should be soft and tender. Because we fried it so well, the vermicelli should be separated into individual strands rather than clumping together. You can top this with fried nuts and raisins for a regal meal, but for a quick weeknight dish, I like to eat it as is. I also like to change this recipe up by adding in flavourings or spices that suit the main dish that I'm making. For this one, I added in the usual salt and pepper, then I added a quarter teaspoon of chilli flakes and one tablespoon of tomato paste. If you do this, make sure you dissolve the paste into the liquid before covering the pot. The result was vermicelli that had a slight tomato and chilli flavour, reminiscent of an arabiata pasta. There's many different ways you could play with the flavours of the vermicelli, and just like rice or any other pasta, it will absorb the flavour of the liquid that it's cooked in. So there you have it, a quick and easy to customise alternative to rice. I eat this about once to twice a week, and it really breaks up the monotony of our side dishes. I hope you found this video useful and I'd love to hear what you think of this vermicelli. Thank you to our wonderful patrons for making this video possible and I'll be back soon with another recipe.